Hello, YouTubers. This is another session where my friend, my dear friend, Josh McCall, and I are back to continue building the decentralized social media platform to our raffle. The purpose of this platform, you know, for people who are not familiar, is to basically build an open source, truly open, truly free, you know, uh, platform that allows you to kind of anybody around the world to spin up their own social media platform and connect to other communities the way the world is today, instead of having one authoritative uh, kind of one, you know, authority at the top that's controlling everything in a social media platform. This is more decentralized the way how everything is. And, you know, sorry for the long delay, you know, sometimes Josh and I were kind of you know, I have something going on. He has something going on, and we kind of kept missing each other. And I think the last time you and I connected was like, was it in April or so a little bit? And let's let's take a look at the poll request. You know, that's can't uh, count back that far. It's it's been too long. Yeah, let's let me uh, one sec. I know that you can't see my camera. You know, uh, give me one sec. Let's go here. Sharing screens. Remind me later. Tarafu, Tarafu web. There you go. And the last time you and I merged a pull request was brokers, components, post dialogue. That was May twenty second. You know, hey, almost. that's later than May or later later than April. Yeah, I'll say June, and I'll say we've been out for about a month or so, a month and a half. Okay. So, so here's the deal. How are you doing, Josh McCall? Are you good? Good, good. Yeah. yeah Josh is Got my right. caffeine. We're ready to go. This guy's caffeine. He's got his cabinet in the back. He's going to start building that cabinet. That's why he wanted to come back on this show so he can kind of build it slowly but surely so we can see the progress every week. Progress. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, it'll look like I have something going on, but uh, right now it just looks like a mess. A different mess, but a mess. So, so listen, the last thing we did was that dialogue just to get people kind of up to speed. You know, I'm going to pull in uh, Tarafu here real quick for everyone to see, and then we will uh, kind of run it. And then we I'll tell you what we're going to do. We need, we need something very important, like whether you are building a social media platform, whether you're building an enterprise system, whatever the heck you're building, you know, you're going to need that one, you know. And that one is super important because you uh you need a you need a way to control your your view and you know josh maybe you and i will be at some point in time be able to kind of talk a little bit about user experience what makes us make these decisions that we make every day when it comes to you know kind of building certain experiences and stuff like that um you know mainly when it comes to uh, something the user is expected to sit in front of for a while right Something like a dashboard, something like so. So this is where you and I stopped last time. Basically, this is we built this dialogue end to end, and we went and said, okay, we're gonna add validations, we're gonna do all kinds of crazy things, you know. And if if an error occurs, it'll go back and say, hey, this text is required, and we actually integrated it with the database, you know, and it was uh, sorry with the API, and it was really great, right? Now. It's time to talk about something a little bit more generic than that. So let me pull out uh, draw IO here real quick, and then I'll tell you what we're going to need to be thinking about. We need to build this top bar, you know, that top bar at any any uh, platform. You basically need a bar at the top. So let's say this is your web page. And on top of that web page, there is always this thing sitting on top, right? Is there any other name for it, Joshua, other than top bar? Well, you just have your normal header, or some people call it like the shell or, or something like that. But uh, your navigation bar, your top bar, your header here, you know, the thing at the top. The thing at the top, right? And, you know, the thing I noticed about this is that, you know, there's some requirements for this. You know, like building that just this thing that sits on top, that's the easiest thing in the world. You know, we can do this in a second, right? The tricky part here is to basically be able to go and say, I want to add a bunch of components on top here. And these components need to be either right aligned or left aligned, right? So I need to be able to add things, right? These things can be, you know, images, usually images. I need to be able to add maybe a title. Maybe I need to add, you know, whatever the case may be. And they need to be flexible. So if I decide that I want to go here and say, this is going to be a little bit extended and I'm going to call it Tarafu 
you know, a portal or to RFO online or whatever I want to call it, it needs to be a little bit more flexible, right? That's the requirement, right? Some of these things will be things as simple as it's just your profile picture. So we're going to throw another component in there, you know, and when you're authorizing and authenticating, it'll pull up all your information like you and I have done before, you know, or, you know, something more interesting, like maybe a notification bell, something that integrates with Blazor Hub, right? So I want to go and say, well, there's a little bit more to this. I want to be able to go and say, here is a, a bill, right? And that bill will just sit right there in here, right? And let's give it a proper color. Uh, let's make it, because uh, you know that's important to me, right? There you go. <laughs> something like this, right? And maybe you want to put in there a gear, options, whatever. There's nothing, there's no website I can think of that I'm using on daily basis that doesn't do that. I don't even know, like, I know LinkedIn. I know that um, GitHub is, what, uh, Twitter? Google. Stop. It wasn't just their main page. But <laughs> so, <laughs> no so, useful website. No, I just. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so GitHub. GitHub has a bunch of options right at the top. Uh, you'll see, I don't know, does Twitter have it? I don't know if Twitter has it. No, Twitter doesn't. Interesting, interesting. Twitter decided to go the left side. You know, okay. Uh, That's just because they're hiding a bunch of things. <laughs> GitHub has it at the top, right? Always GitHub has it at the top. Facebook, for sure. Facebook has it at the top. I don't know of a website, you know, that doesn't have it. You know, it, you know, it's almost universal now. If you go to YouTube, boom, you have it at the top. It's becoming more universal than anything now that and and you're gonna need to have like a it is really comes down to this idea, right? I wanna be able to build this thing that sits on top where I can add things in here however I want, right? Okay. Let's start with the simple things. What do you think about that, Josh? Simple things first, right? Like it. If we got to start with simple things, the good news is if you're starting a simple Blazor application, it already comes with all these bills and whistles, at least a high level bills and whistles for it. And we'll, we'll leverage some of that. But let's just see what that looks like into our application. So I'm going to go back to my Taraful core here. We're going to do the POC part of it. What do you think about that, Josh? If we do the POC part, here you go. Sounds good. Right, the POC part of it, here it is. I want to go into, so in in a Blazor application, let me increase the the font here for people on their uh, on their phones. Let me kind of, I don't know what's up with my accent tonight. Must be the T, right? So let's see here. Here's Joshua. All right, Josh, are you still with me? Still alive? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Don't leave me alone. I get scared. All right, so we created this post view. We created all that great. Uh, why did we initialize that post view, by the way? That's odd. Because of the after render thing? Oh, where is this guy being used? Add view service. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, here's the deal, Joshua. You know, in any Blazor application, you know, everything, there's like this main layout and this main layout, whatever you render on the screen, no matter where you navigate, this main, right, Josh, this main layout is something that says this will always be there. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, you know, this will always be there, right? What else do you have to say about this, Joshua, about the main layout? Any other notes? That's it, right? It's, al so, it's always there. It's always there, right? So if, if you are navigating towards whatever views you have, right? It even comes, I think Joshua, it comes with outside of the box kind of capability where you can go and say, even if the, like, if I go here and say, okay, this is, here's a label, right? This is the main, this is part of the main layout, right? So if I go and kind of do a, 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 a hot reload in here, and I go back to that little view that you and I built together, You'll see that in there. But what if I go and navigate into XYZ, right? Even if that doesn't exist, this will always be there, right? The beautiful thing is that the routing part on the app, and I'm going to show you guys, you know, what that looks like in a second. The routing part basically goes and says, if this 
route doesn't exist and go ahead there's nothing at this at this i think that's a pretty neat feature we could change it to whatever we want but it's nice to have that sitting in there right mm -hmm. so that's the main layout guys you know that's that's the part that always stays there so if you are in youtube for instance no matter what page you're going to in youtube that top part stays the same no matter what like whatever whatever you go that top part will always be be there if i go into my channel that top part's still there doesn't matter right so that's the same thing right okay now we want to put a bar in that part right because that bar is going to be the part where we have all these it's it's a it's a form of exposure layer that we're trying to do so let's go back into our code here real quick and see what that looks like. So it's our full portal. Here it is. Okay, so that's the label, right? Here's the good news. If you create any new Blazor application from scratch, right? I'm not going to kind of pretend, oh, I know this, you know, off the top. No, there isn't. There's a, there's this nice view that comes outside of the box, that comes in with any Blazor application, right? They have a little thing called sidebar. And if you look into the CSS that gets generated, you'll find all of these things already there, right? Like if I go and say sidebar, and here it'll tell you, oh, I have the gradient, you know, gradient image and all of that kind of cool things that you can have. If you look at the top here, this is your page, this is your navigation menu, and then, so this is the guy that sits on the left side. And we and we're not going to talk about that yet. We don't need that yet. But that part, that top row. This is where all the magic happens. So if I grow, let me throw this away because I took it from like a validation thing. The exact same thing that you and I just did. If I go and run the application, why didn't I have reload this one, Josh? That would have been nice. Let's do this. So if I go back here, watch, you'll see something interesting happening. Watch this. Now you have this about section at the top, right? And I bet you this about section is shrinking like this because we did something for the CSS of that page that we're in, right? But if I go into XYZ, I think, see, it's kind of expanding. So something happened with the CSS that we need to fix, right, Joshua? I don't know what it is, but we really modified something that kind of made the dialogue look in a certain way, right? What is that thing? Page, sidebar. Uh, let's see here, Joshua. What could it be? Flix. It looks like it's taking up the is the width is going to be whatever the the content is and stuff. And and so if you don't have anything on on the page that's not taking up the hundred percent of that that width, then the the top isn't uh, isn't taking up that space. Um, it looks like, but is that really what it is? Okay, that's interesting. So if I spin up, if I run this existing uh, Blazor application that I have, let's try this out together. If I go here and say, okay, here's an existing Blazor application. Let's try it out together, okay? Uh, let's see, namespace, whatever, a whole bunch of things. Let's do this. Let me go into, I'm gonna create it like a dummy Blazor application just so we can see what's happening. There you go. Solution, add, new project. And I know you can't see this because um, StreamYard is weird, but demo <laughs> with you know top the bar. I hear you furiously clicking, so yeah, you can hear me, right? Yep. Yeah. Here's here's this app, and then right click, uh, start set up and start a project. If you look at the um, pages. You're going to find here the main layout. I think it's in shared main layout. And it's pretty much the same thing. It comes outside of the box, just like that. So I go and run this guy. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Yeah, this, this is the guy I want. This guy at the top here. So now, if that's the theory, Joshua, then, you know, maybe if I go and navigate to XYZ, see, something else is up. We change something in the CSS, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so here's the deal. I want to take this this box here at the top and actually standardize it, componentize it, create a base component, make sure that this base component is something that can be reutilized. And then inside that base component, so we're gonna need a bunch of things. Like we need a base component, but a bunch of other base components that we can pass inside that guy. 
right? That will determine where we're gonna go. So here's, here's what I'm thinking about this. Um, for this space component, we probably want to determine what is left side, right side, and middle side, or middle in general. Like I want to have components that sits in the middle. So let me take away all that garbage. Here's how I want to break this, Joshua. Like the component is going to be like there is a left side, right side, and middle. And this is where I want to place my components. So you get to choose where you want to put things, right? Uh, let me make sure these guys are the same size because that kind of, you know, OCD kicking in. It's a problem. It is. Something like this. So I want right side, I want left side, and I want middle. And based on that, we'll be able to kind of, can you actually say middle side? Is that a word? No, you can't say middle side because it's yeah, not a side. It's in the middle. Okay, Josh. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so th that means that we want some sort of a, uh, Joshua, we want some sort of a base component that has three render fragments inside of it. And these render fragments basically dictate which side do you want to go. We could start with that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with that in the normal Blazor application so we don't have to waste too much time kind of fixing whatever CSS we broke and then move mm -hmm. that over or what, or, or how do you want to do it? No, I think that's that's great. I, I like to I like to spin up the new template project so you know I have a good um, you know it's uh, pristine. You haven't messed with anything, and then when you copy things over and something doesn't work, you know you broke something. So uh, I like starting with the the new the one you just spun up so we can make some make some headway. Okay, my friend, let's do this. So I'm gonna go here and just go and say, like just experimentation, right? I'm gonna go here and say, you know, here is you know here is a new folder just for the sake of it here is views and hope you kind of capitalize isn't weird and you kind of touched on it but so you said you wanted to standardize it so we're not using an existing css thing um and we're not you know pulling in a, a component because you kind of want to make it reusable for uh kind of a blazerized deal that you have control and understand how it's working or what's the kind of motivation to do it in kind of this reusable blazer kind of template so, so, so the most important part about this is to kind of, you know, first of all, engineering experience and maintainability, right? If people can understand, if people take more than three seconds to figure out what you're trying to say, you know, maybe your code is not that clean anymore. Maybe it's not that clear anymore. Mm -hmm. You get to have the luxury of telling people about the standard, you know? So you say, here's my sets of rules. Take as long as you can. But once you look at my code, if it doesn't stay sincere and honest to that, the maintainability of your code becomes a big problem. The sustainability, the extensibility of the code becomes a big problem. So it's, you know, you know, Josh, the hardest thing, like as a team lead, you know, the biggest, the hardest problem that you may face is not coming up with a standard. Actually coming up with a standard is an easy part. The hard part is to hold people true to it, right? And then continue to evolve it. Like anybody could just come up with an idea like, oh, here's, here's, oh, dependency injection, it's great, right? But then where's your two cents into this? And how are you gonna hold people accountable to kind of keep pushing that forward, right? Because it's very easy, like people can easily diverge from the standard, right? If there is no accountability, if you're not holding people responsible, it becomes a big problem, right? And it's really, really sexy and enticing to cut corners. So simple, like, just, ah, who cares, right? And that's the beginning of the end, right? That's the biggest nail in the coffin. I don't know, does that answer your question? Yeah, so it, I mean, because it sounds it sounds like we're, we we don't the world does not need yet another CSS top bar. But what the big win that you're asking for, or you're looking for, is instead of having uh, you, us reuse something else that is we don't know how it works or it's it's complicated or causes problems. You're the big win here is from your team's perspective, removing the black box or removing the magic behind the the uh, the code. So it just it, it fits in line with the standard. It shows it's just easy to understand and. And it's uh, it's just removing the magic so that people it's more approachable. So that makes sense. 
Precisely. Let's see, let's see how we can make this work, right? So back to this guy here. If I go here, Joshua, and I say, here is, uh, just, just for the sake of it, here's his views, and then I'm going to create basis, right? And then I'm going to go down here and say, here's my, uh, what did you call it, header? Yep, yep. Headers. And then I'm going to go down here and create a new Blazor component. I'm just going to steal the exact same code for, for starters. But then later okay. we're going to do some crazy stuff, right? So so here's I'm going to go here and say this is header base, right? This is header, header base. And this header base literally doesn't have anything other than whatever is in that uh, main layout. So I'm going to take that part, just that tiny part. I'm going to take it out like this. I'm going to slap it right here. So that means... Right, Josh, if I go into my main layout and just say header base, mm -hmm. that should do the trick. Like nothing yep. should change, right? Let's find yep. out. Find out. So here you go. Like this, header base. And then if I run this, something tells me it's not going to work, and I'll tell you why. Uh -oh. Let's just see. Don't, don't, I'm not going to jinx it. Although they already spoken. Ah, see? It didn't work out. Watch this. It didn't work out. And maybe that's why our app also wasn't working. Why is it not working, yeah, Joshua? Because Blazor has this problem, right? As an as an engine, it doesn't understand that you want to transcend some CSS. Like the CSS about that guy is at the top here. Right? The CSS that I want to transcend, that top row is 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 at the top at this level here. But you uh. pushed everything down here. But then you might come and say, well, doesn't it just transpile? Does it just add everything up? What's the solution for this? Let me show you. This is going to make you throw up, but it's actually how it's <laughs> going to work. Watch this. So now does that work? So it know. must be it must be wrapped in a div. Is that what it is? So if we inspect it, because we put it in a component, it's wrapped in a div. Is that is that right? It's not just wrapped in a div. It's because, you know, Blazor built to kind of isolate the CSS. Oh, so, the, okay. So this is a, a because when it transpiles. Deep it is basically the, saying transcend. Okay. Can, can we inspect it? So it's, it's probably not just doing dot, it's not putting a class of dot top dash row. It's dot, dot top dash row 5643 or whatever, the auto generated thing on it. Okay. So now the deep is the keyword for telling Blazor find the top row, even if it's it. yeah. where, okay. Because now, it's not put in the same folder, the same file, or the same level and stuff. It's got to find it wherever it's at. Okay. What do you think? Do you yeah, think it's going to work? Uh, well, I don't. I didn't know about that deep thing. So hey, look, it works. Can you inspect it? Yeah. See? Do you see that guy? <laughs> You see this? Uh, okay, that makes sense. So it's, it's saying, okay, it's, it's giving it it's, uh, a weird identifier and then saying any top row that is uh, uh, nested underneath of that thing, um, then it's applying those cells. Interesting. Okay. So how do we how do we deal with that? Is there a better way to do it? Or is that is that what we're stuck with? Of course there is. You know, uh, <laughs> you know of course there is. There's a lot of things. Nope, in the do. video, we don't have anything. To... <laughs> <laughs> we don't have anything. Shut down the video. The session is over, right? <laughs> Um, so, you know, just very recently, I created a new library called Sharp Styles. And what this library does is that it allows you to write C-sharp code, and that C-sharp code gets transcended or transpiled into CSS, mm -hmm. right? To just kind of bring it into perspective, you're basically looking at a C-sharp object, and it basically serializes that C-sharp object into CSS. Why? A lot of people are like, Hassan, what, like, what's the, per why would you do that, right? So I can test drive it. So if there's if it's an object in C sharp, now I can I can go and test drive this whole thing, right? Like I can literally go and say, if you change the value of the background from red to blue to green, a test will actually fail. And that test doesn't so, have to be an end-to-end -end or anything like that. 
So couldn't so I mean if I were to just naively guess like the you could you could serialize just a, a, a string object you know then you'd have to do string string manipulation so that's gross so that's probably why you wouldn't want to do that um, but then is this just really just a um, uh, a, a plain what do they call it a plain uh, poco or a plain old um, uh, object is this uh, is this is it just a jo or a, a C sharp object or is it a uh, did you actually start with a CSS like um, standard and then you support all of the different class names. It supports all different class names. Like if you look at, if you look at the library, and it took it took me literally a second just to get everything because it just needed some keyboard ninja skills to basically go and say give me all the properties that you can imagine. So check this out. There's this model called Sharp Style, right? Here is every possible rule in the universe that CSS supports. Hmm. All of them. All of them. And then I went on top of that and I said, hey, do you want to describe this as a CSS class, CSS deep, CSS element, and CSS ID? And it will know by the name of it to go and do that hash or dot or just leave it as is and everything like that. Hmm. It's pretty cool, right? And then people already opened issues. That's great. Okay, so yeah. So, so the example of it is here, Josh. I can go like this and say, here is my component, and here's how I'm defining my class, right? And it, and 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 it translated into this. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, and I want so I want to see the, the, the go back of the the example. Where did you, where did you uh, specify what the the type was and stuff? It says uh, there's a component style. Oh, because it's okay. So the the the, the my component style is um, no no. Where's the type? Uh, so there's there shape style and then. So there is a class. Where do you specify whether it's ah? It's the it's the attribute there and stuff. Yeah. So it's a class, CSS ID versus element versus class. This is actually pretty cool. I, I know. <laughs> of course it is. What are you talking about? Of course it is. It's actually really, really cool, right? So why did I do that, right? So in the in the Microsoft Mixed Reality uh, team that I'm in, I was like, okay, guys, you know, we need to test CSS. And people were like, well, nobody tests CSS. I was like, no, we should probably test it, right? Just because nobody's doing it doesn't mean that we should stop too. So we basically went, like, literally, you'll see, I was just pushing this the other day. I went and said, what did I do? I said, I want my lab overviews to have certain kind of components in it. And watch this. This is my CSS right here. This is my expected style. But but why why does nobody test CSS? I don't know. That's, you know, I think people rely on, well, you're the UI guy. Why don't you tell me? Well, I was going to say that. So the, why we don't test CSS is because it's hard, you know, like it's just, that's, that's it. So like I've been on, on several different teams on, on different companies and, and kind of follow the trend and stuff. It's kind of hard that, um, when you, it's cascading style sheets. So that when you have different CSS properties all over the place, they can combine, uh, together. So the best thing that we've kind of come to, come together to, to kind of figure out is, especially when you have calculations and different screen sizes and whatnot and stuff, if you heard of the snapshots, um, testing, right. So like, it kind of takes a snapshot of it and then like if you it lays over images and stuff and if something's changed too much there's some ai that goes on and says uh we don't know what's wrong but you gotta go go check it out and everything and stuff so really the um if you've heard of like diminishing returns or, uh, or like the the things that are easy to fix so we test the things that are important to the business and then the things that are maddening to the engineer to test that we could just easily fix like if it goes from red to blue you file a bug you, you change the color from red to blue and you move on without your day that's because it's been so hard to test but it sounds like this might be uh, the wrapper not the wrapper you asked for but the wrapper you need that allows you to have the, the a little bit uh, better control over your test um, we saw a little bit of that from when we went from uh, react to the styles there some people love the styles that are in line the JSX and some people hate them one thing I like about them is it is kind of like the idea that you uh, you're talking here is that they are objects so you can you can have a spread operator say here's my base tiles and then you kind of override them but this goes one more step that because you're putting it right in c uh c sharp instead c -sharp, of just uh yeah. you just just an object um it sounds like we might be able to have a little bit more control over it i'd like to see a, a bigger example of it and stuff but i think if you if we have a an easy way to test it then it becomes not such a burden to test so 
when everyone says we don't we don't ever test C sharp, you're like we haven't before, but now we can. And you don't. And that's I, I assume that you don't want to test every rule. You just want to test the important ones, like just just our, the ones that change the view. Like not every rule. Why would I change? Why is it just that? All I care about is that like my expected, you know, and my actual right. Like the example that my team has been doing, you know, inside Microsoft is basically them going and saying, well, you know, if we you know how are we going to do this and they basically went and said oh this is you know we could we could just look at what we need the component to look like right and based on that we can determine you know how that works so basically i okay i want my lab overview to have a border that looks this way display width and it just takes care of all of that for you it just serializes all of it and boom mm -hmm. it just works you know what i mean and then you can go and say okay this is my expected style just like how you build your back end now you can go and say lab overview style should match expected style. We're done. And we're going to do some of that, you and I, right? You know, you and I are going to play around with some of that. Because here's the thing about technology. You could build libraries all day long. Okay, so there are people that will talk about an idea and they never get it done. These are dreamers, right? It doesn't matter. It's a, it, it's a what do you call it, Josh? It's a, it's a dozen for a dime. You know, ideas are a dozen for a dime. Are you actually willing to walk the walk and go actually make it happen? Okay, you went from that stage and you created an idea, you materialized it, you turned it into something real, right? Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to create the library and all of the sudden the whole world is going to fall apart and come, you know, use my library. No, that's just half of the way, right? You created the library, now you need to go preach it. Now you need to you know, reach out to the community, use it in your daily job, you know, it, it kind of involve it into everything you're doing. So you can test it for yourself, right? Like you can actually use it. Now, there's a lot of people, you know, everybody that comes in and asks me to mentor them. The first thing I ask them be like, come back to me next week with an idea of something that you care about, something that you would be building, something that you would be using every day. And if you can't come up with that idea, because people will work on something for one of two reasons, right? They either get paid to do it or they actually really care about it right so we'll go build it right like josh this thing that's behind you you built that by hand right or did you just buy it from uh, ikea well uh, maybe we won't go there <laughs> anyway i mean you care about you care about something you build it right yeah. if you care enough about something you'll build it or you will pay someone to build it for you right mm -hmm. I needed something, I went and built it, you know, just by you saying go build it and build a library doesn't mean that people are just gonna start using it. This guy that created uh, Wordle, right? Wordle, right? He, he created it for his girlfriend, you know, he wanted to mm -hmm. give her a nice gift. So he had a need to do it, right? He already has his sister sitting up there telling him all kinds of things, right? So anyway, let's go back to this. So just doing this deep piece kind of fixed it, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't want to do that. You know, we, we, we don't want to do that. I want the, the component itself to be self-contained, mm -hmm. right? I want to be able to go. So we have one of two options. We could either go and say, oh, yeah, then let's just do that. Or, or we can do something better than that. We can go into our um, base component here. And basically create a back end for the front end, right? We want to go here and say, here is my um, a header base dot razor dot CS, right? And here's a partial, right? And then I want to go and say, okay, so this is component base. Where's it base component? I never forget. I never remember those. Right. And then I want to go and say override uninitialized, right? And I'm going to go here and say set up, watch this, set up styles. Okay. Okay. There's a method, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I need a library. Let's see what you think about the sharp styles.
I like your logo. What is your logo? Is it is it a? It's like it's it like a, a suit, like a suit, like a, like yeah. someone wearing a suit with a bow tie. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, like sharp style look. You know, it's like um, really cool. So okay, so here's sharp <laughs> styles, right? And then here's my style. So I want to go here and say prop uh, sharp sharp style like this uh, styles. Right, and I can build my styles here. Right, I can go here and say, okay, in my, I need some models in here. So I'm gonna go here and say models, and under models, I'm gonna go and say views. Under views, I'm gonna go and say basis, and under basis, I'm gonna go and say headers. This is your enterprise fizz buzz. Oh yeah, did you actually look at the code? Did you get a chance? I didn't get to look at the, the code. I really want to. Oh, you will laugh so hard. You'll be like, I'm, I'm going to make fun of Hassan forever for this. Iterate. 300 and some issues on it and stuff. And... <laughs> All right. So here's uh, Sharp Styles. To me, I like, you know, uh, FizzBuzz, it should, even if it's in uh, something silly like Java, uh, it should just be a REPL. Like, it should be like a, one of those web editors and stuff. And, like, you know, it should be 10 lines of code, you know. But so I, I'm looking forward to reading it. That'll be my late night reading. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, okay. What do I need here? I need some sort of a, you know, I need this top row uh, background. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. Right. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, we need these things in here as uh, styles so what i really need is this top row so watch what i'm going to do here watch this i'm going to go here and say oh this top row is a css class okay. like this okay and then inside that guy i'm going to go here and say hey this is a sharp style that's called top row watch this top row see i'm honoring my c sharp kind of naming convention Mm -hmm. Right, but also at the same time, I can now go back to this base component. Let's steal that guy. I'm gonna go back to my base component here and say, "Hey, my style actually this dot styles equals new header uh, base style or header styles." Right, and this header style has a thing called top row, which is a new sharp style like this. And now I get to add all these things inside of it, right? So I can go here and say, give me these. What do I need? I need here. So everything you might need here is, is there. So background color, watch background color equal. And I can put this value in there. But since this is a base component, we don't really care about. Look, look, how, look how this thing is kind of figuring out, trying to figure me out. Watch this. Border bottom, right, equals. And that's 1px solid. Uh, let's see, uh, hash, whatever, like that. I also want justify, see, every single property you can think of, I already put in there, right? And the crazy AI is now figure, figured me out. Watch, watch, it figured me <laughs> out. <Okay. laughs> it's Flex. on you. Yep, it figured me out, just like that. Flex, let's see, uh, align items. That's scary, align items. Center, yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if I take all of this out, would that be enough? Because I know there's other top row things. Like if you go back here, we have top row, deep uh, link, top row, button link. Mm -hmm. This is for the links, right? And then you yeah. have top row, first child, and then media, top row, not display. That's when it's collapsed, right? right. And yep. then a bunch of other things, right? Yep. All right. <clears throat> okay. Let's go back to this guy. So that means that I can go now here and say, this is set up, setting up the styles. Now, all I really got to do is just go up here and say, and this is only for base component uh, situation. In non-base component, I'm going to have to actually create something called style element. But in here, I can go here and say uh, styles dot to CSS and we're done. Mm. And now it took that C sharp object of yours and just like that turned it into CSS. Right? Let's test it. So if I go here and kind of I, I background kind of I back kind of uh, control Z this top row. So this guy's supposed not to work, right? Let's go and see. It's still using that header base. 
I might be getting ahead of a, myself and everything, but uh, I wonder if you could do a, uh, instead of two CSS, which it obviously puts out CSS block or whatnot, uh, you could do two inline CSS. Um, I don't yeah. know if you already have that, but... Um, I, I don't, but we, we could, definitely. I like it. Watch this, it worked. Nice. I'll, I'll, nice. I'll, pro I'll prove it to you. I'll go back into the C-sharp code and then do a hot reload. Watch this. I'll go into the C-sharp code. Here's my C-sharp code, this header base like this. And I'm mm -hmm. going to change the background color to black like this. And I'm going to do black. a hot... Huh? You spell it with a G, go black. Go black. And then let's go into this guy. Do I have... Nice. Oh, see? C-sharp, boom. Yeah. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. And I, I like the fact that the um, you, because you're using the uh, the contractor, the basically the um, the API of the library, you don't have to re remember the weird syntax of colon colon deep and everything and stuff. So like you're saying, this is a class and you, with the attribute, and so then it it knows to take care of the yeah. of the blazer you know bits and stuff. So it's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's perfect, right? So that takes care of this top guy, at least in the non-mobile view, right? So in the non-mobile view, it'll stay be there, but we kind of in the mobile view want to kind of hide it, right? We need to think about ways where we can hide that guy. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back to this. So now that we have this guy here, Joshua, now we need to be able to pass things inside of it. Right. We need to be able to go and say, I want right side, middle, middle and left side. Right, middle, left. So that basically means that we need to be able to go and say, um, what is it, Joshua? I need a render fragment in here. Right. And this is left, uh, right side elements. Or should we call it components? Or items, I would, I would, I would call it components, or, or um, the you, uh, a lot of the CSS people call it slots. You could do it uh, a right and right slots, or, or um, is that what you want to call it? Well, not really, but I'm just saying that's what people do call it. <laughs> well, I mean, I like left. components because every, everything we're making is components. Do we say left components, right components, middle components, or left side, yep. right side? Okay. Mm, yeah. Uh, how, how do you select just one word in the code? Just one word. What's your shortcut? Uh, can, uh, well, it'd be control arrow over, but it, that, that only works when you have. A, is it uh, control shift left arrow? But nope. I'll show you. Let me just disable this nonsense. Yeah, that that makes my eyes much happier. Come on, what you just disabled? Oh, what was that magic? Oh, 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 I, oh, I just disabled these little squigglies that say, oh, you didn't check for null. I don't like things thinking for me. But watch this. Alt, control, shift, lift. It will select one word. For Alt, me. control, shift. Alt, control, shift, left. Okay, what do you do to select a bunch of words that are similar to the one that you're selecting right now? I don't. Alt, shift, semicolon. Now I have all the sides. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So now Alt, Control, Shift. Now I can select side, and I can just get rid of it, and we're done. How about that? That's very cool. I, I wish I could show you my pairing session yesterday. Not yesterday. It was Friday night. Um, I picked up a whole bunch of things, and I, I wanted, like, a bunch of exceptions. You know how dependency exception, dependency validation exception, all that. And I just mm -hmm. picked up the exceptions, and I wrote the whole block. Just using that, that was pretty cool. Okay, I think, do we need to, to pass this as parameters? I don't think yep. it was parameter, right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yep, unless you want to pass it down as context, but um, if you're going to pass it in as a... Um... Is there a parameter? No, parameter is why you pass it a component as a property, right? Well, this how do you want to else. use this? No, dude, we want to go here and say... Oh, this is you want to use... Okay, yeah, because you're going to use it as a, like a, a child, so a, a, as a tag. Um, yeah, so now I want to say lift... Uh, what was it? Um, uh, I don't remember. What did I do here? If you look at dialogue, 
parameter, parameter, where's the render? Oh, did, did we just call it render fragment? Is that really what it is? I guess you were right, Joshua. I disobeyed you. Bad. Yeah, Bad you had well. me second guessing myself. I thought there was a there's a special case for, but I might be thinking of uh, um, uh, context and stuff. But okay, I want all the render fragments, you know, to have parameter on top of them. Let's show off a little, right? Right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I could do this better. Uh, yeah, there you go. Now I'm just showing off, right? You misspelled it three times. What are you talking about? Yeah, well, then you corrected it, but anyway. Right. <laughs> and we need, a, we need kind of a new line to kind of separate these. Oh, that's bad. Something like... <laughs> there you go. Right? Yep. I, I tell people at work, like, if you... Uh, the less you touch the mouse, the faster you'll be to get something done. And then it turns into like a show off. Every time, you know, you start telling people about because people go like, whoa, and then now you're stuck. Now you're in this place, right? All right. So that means if I go back to this main layout, Joshua, I can go now and go like left side components. Mm -hmm. I can go and say middle components. Not too bad, right? And I can go and say, now, here comes your part, my friend. Like, um, how do you, so this is right components, right? So my question for you would be, should we just call it lift, middle, right? Would that be cleaner? Sure. Are you just agreeing with me, Joshua? No, I, I because they're if they're all components, then they're um, they uh, then it's it's kind of implied that they're all going to be components, or you're going to pass in. And we know that Blazor, you're going to pass in a fragment or a a, a templated thing. Um, so, especially since you're using the your tag um, as your template and stuff, it, I think it is implied that where it's going to be a, a template or a component that you're passing in. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> so if I just go here, that would be. Uh, let's do this. Control Alt Shift Left Arrow. Oh yeah. How did you know that? <laughs> okay. Here you go. So we have left side, middle, and uh, and right side. Okay. So now we want to be able to put things in there, and mm -hmm. these things will go in the right place. So what would be so now we need to think about like the CSS, right? Like going back into this header base, right? Mm -hmm. We have this thing going on, right? Obviously we want to get rid of this, but <clears throat> I think I think the way we want to do this is to have like a div, div, and div, right? And each one of these will render whatever, like this would be left, right? This would be uh, metal and this would be right. Mm -hmm. that's that's how i would approach this for starters which means that if i take this guy here like our ultimate goal is that if i go into this uh um, um main layout and i put this on the left side it should show up on the left right let's see where it's going to place it first Ooh, we have an error uh -oh. I, data what did i do Oh, because I disabled things and it's doing this really crappy, like implicit usings, like the universal usings, right? So it's it's basically saying, oh, let me let me kind of take care of all because because I don't know why we're trying to be JavaScript, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, these universal kind of let me use everything for you. Mm -hmm. Why would you mention all these namespaces? Like, yeah, that's that's a deal breaker for me. I, I was like, no. Not going to do that. Nope. Implicit using is a bad idea. Uh, because that means that there's hidden code sitting somewhere else doing things that can control your application. You know what I mean? So immediately, I just disable those. Immediately. 
it takes me a second to kind of fix it all, but it's totally worth it, dude. I'd rather do that than kind of like, let me show you an example. Do you see this? Where, where's this coming from? Nowhere, right? Nowhere. <laughs> what, was, what was so bad? Like, seriously, time for a rant, right? Like, what was so bad about having a program CS where I know where my args are coming from, right? Now I have this mysterious, weird colored thing that's showing up, and I don't know where it's coming from because it's hidden. The program CS is hidden behind. And, and for the people watching, you know, how I fix this is that I create my projects in .NET 5 template, and then I shift it to .NET 7. So it builds the, the right stuff. Like this here that... is, is more comfortable. Like in here, I, I can see like here, program CS, here's my arcs. I know where they're coming from. Because that's the entry point of any C-sharp application. Like God intended it to be. <laughs> I, I think when I was uh, I was reading the docs and stuff uh, because of the shift in the templates and stuff. I think because right now you have that one main method and it has to be that file. So anything that um, and any of the templating or scaffolding that wants to help you out has to edit that file. Mm. But if you um, but the, there's so there's two main reasons why they kind of went to the removing that kind of boilerplate, if you will, is because they wanted to make it easier to to uh, approach. There was less things to screw up in, in that file if you also like if you follow the docs you can like copy over a, a, a snippet and, it, and it's more likely to work but also you can have different layers of middleware so like the, you can have a builder.services add something in this file and builder.services add something in this file so it because the you that they're all all the different files are then built together and in, into the that function but you're, like you said it's it's hidden somewhere so the the motive was easier uh, or more approachable and ha and made more flexible for middleware the the downside is it makes people like Hassan mad yep it backfired yep. <laughs> it, 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 ba it backfired badly <laughs> all right man so anyway this is just we're just trying to build this in in the open space so we can kind of you know play around and see so here's the deal this guy here, I wanted it to be on the left, right? Mm -hmm. But because how, you know, uh, HTML is working, now if I run this, this guy will obviously go on the right side <laughs> for two reasons. Because of experience, I, because also I've done this 50,000 times, I've done it while Josh was talking. So it went in here, right? So what is a crazy CSS rule? that will tell us everything in this box goes left, everything in this box goes middle, everything in this box goes right. I'm assuming that you want to make them all display flex or something like that, right? Yeah, I was going to say that's that depends on your philosophy. If you uh, if you do it uh, uh, absolute versus flex versus uh, um, if you do it like display block, float left, whatever and stuff. But I always have to look it up because that they're... Um, but I think flex would probably be is, is kind of what most people are doing. So flex... Uh, float left. I think it's like a line items left or something like that. Okay, there's justify right, justify left. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to this header style and I'm going to go here and say, okay, here's another CSS class. And this is here prop sharp style. And this is uh, left side. And then a couple more of these, right? One for middle. And this is uh, kind of the right side, right? So now we have have all of them. Now we can go down into the uh, component itself, and I can go and say, okay, what do I want to do with my the the, the place where I want to put things is the left side, right? So here's left side equal new sharp style like this. And now this sharp style, did you say display flex? Yeah, display flex, and then there's usually a flex direction, but then I think you actually are you're doing you're using it with justify, which uh, which also works. I haven't done it yet, honestly, but let's just see. It's crazy, like this is how I know that this thing is really AI based because it's trying to add things in there. Like it's not really copying, it's not just copying someone else's code, you know, which a lot of people are really angry about recently, but you know, let's see, display, flex. Okay. Other than that, is there anything I need to do, though? 
So I can go here and say, okay, this is class uh, left side, right? And this is class right side or right. And this is class uh, uh, right side. Okay, so far so good, right? What else do I need to do here? I basically need to go and say, other than flex, what else do I need to add, Joshua? Um, we could do, um, well, I think I click, on, click the link I sent you that, um, uh, in the chat. There's one one example, and then I'm trying to look at because there's there's a couple different ways to do it, and uh, but I don't want it to be like bulky and it has JavaScript in it. That would be important. nope. You don't have to you don't have to do that. And so so the so you have flex item. So you basically they did a flex container, and then left, and then they just have flex direction. So like flex direction row versus uh, and then uh, um, what's a flex direction? What's a flex so, direction? So your flex direction is going to be either um, vertical or like it's going to be aligned uh, vertical or, or horizontal. And so the row is telling it to be aligned in the in the row. So the um, I think that by default, it's going to uh, shove everything to the left, um, I think, is, is uh, no, I guess. Um, I can Ooh, with that. Should we give each and every one of them width 33 percent? We should, um, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So let's do that. Let's go down here and say this is so the width of the left side is 33%. Right? And the same thing goes with oops, uh, this guy. And the same thing goes also with okay, so we have the widths, right? You know, this would be correct if we just went in there and said, let me show you. If I just go in there and just say, hey, here's a stop, just out of curiosity, I'm just go here and say the background color for left, but just so we see whether we have it or not, right, is red. Mm -hmm. And then you have background color for middle. I'm going to make it green. And then you have background color for... Oh my God! How did it know blue though? I was gonna say blue. I swear to God, RGB. Josh. Yeah. RGB maybe. Is it really that smart? I don't know. Or maybe it's really that dumb. So, so here's what it did, right? So it went in there and basically said, "Well, you know, these other components don't have content in them, or I misplaced it. It's one or the other, right? See, left side, right side." right side wait did i do something wrong why does this say right well, side yeah, and but, right yeah you have left side and right and then right side but the... i might i might i might have uh, kind of screwed up yeah that should be metal right yeah there you go let's try this again yeah, one of the easiest examples I see is the parent is uh, is set display flex, and then flex wrap is uh, set to wrap, uh, and then the width is set to one hundred percent. So you have a container that's saying if you if you resize your container or resize your page, it will wrap uh, if need be, um, and then it's the parents taking up one hundred percent of the uh, the width, and then the ch children are going to be width of thirty three uh, percent. Um, Check it. There you go. So that, I mean, it's not taking the whole kind of power of the thing. It's kind of ex like stretching itself based on the component itself. So I'm assuming like if this guy is, I don't know, if we make a width on this guy for, or a height on this guy for like 100 pecs. Yeah, see? It'll do like the... What about 100%? 100%? Yep. That's, that's its 100%. So that means that the container, which is this guy, is not letting it. But why is that? Like, do you see that little gap, that little empty? Yeah. What? Why is that in there? Well, click on the one that's in between. So the, on the left, uh, the left side, uh, click on that div, because um, that div is that set to one hundred percent. So set that to one hundred, the height to one hundred percent. Uh, yeah, there you go. 
So we need to set the height for them to 100%. Yep. But then we need to, a little padding. So maybe if we, <laughs> so if we put it to 80. Or you could do calc and then and then do uh, um, 100% minus a certain uh, um, like EMs or whatever and stuff. So like if you wanted to do. Like this. Well, not twenty EMs. So one one EM is the height of your of your font. Um, so then you would want to do um, it, and it would, it's not hundred percent. It'd be a hundred. Uh, is it hundred percent? Uh, yeah, maybe that. Uh, but do um, uh, pixels or minus twenty pixels? Why is it not a hundred percent minus twenty pixels? Yeah. Why is it not? Uh, it doesn't not like the. Nope, that's not real. What's wrong with our? What's wrong with our calc? Can, can you actually do a hundred percent in your calc this way? Yeah, yep. Uh, do the take one, out the percentage. Maybe but, it's just 100. But wait, Joshua, the one thing that's more important to me than this is that can I do like justify justify content? Vertical? Uh, center? Not center, uh, middle. But what was the thing that puts it in the middle? Like the... What's what's the word I'm looking for, Joshua? A that, line item? Not a line. There's justify content, right? Yep. What's that? Something that puts it in the middle, not stuck at the top like this, right? You know what I mean? So, oh, oh. Um, is it vertical line, really? Yeah, so for text no, items, it's a vertical work. line. No, that doesn't work. What would put that guy in the middle in here? Well, you're uh, so you have um, uh, you have elements that can, are, can be block aligned, and then you have text to elements. And, um, so flex, uh, let me look it up. So flex, uh, uh, vert, align, think. Hmm. It says hmm. uh, align item center, justify content center, um, and. Okay. And then uh, line height. So you'd want to. Uh, um, so oh, line your, height. No, yeah. there's a better way to do this. Really? Well, that's why. That's why because your your uh, your link only ha is going to have your, the line height of where your text is going to go um, is going to be smaller than the the size of your container. Um, so you you could uh, you could wrap it with a div and then push the the div down. Uh, but if you want to center the the link, um, I think you have to set the line height. What would be the line height for this? To kind it'd of be, well, it'd be whatever. Well, well hold the time, line hold height time. would be hundred percent. Well, first of all, I want to put the height to an eighty percent, and then I put line height to be a hundred uh, to either eighty percent or a hundred percent. A hundred percent. How'd that work? It moved. It started moving. Yeah. It's or uh, sorry, line height would be. Um, you have to set it to uh, certain pixels or EMs. Um, so e one EM is the is the line height of. So if you had fourteen, if your your font size was fourteen pixels, one EM would be fourteen pixels. So two EMs would be twenty eight pixels. Um, so you might have to. That's why you might want to um, put it in a div and push this. Uh, set the the size of your font and then push the the, the containing div down. Um, but if you all, if you know that the header is always going to be a certain size, then you can you can uh, set your line height to be that size. Okay, so line height is the the uh, is the way you want to go with this, right? Why don't we just do padding, bro? Okay. Like padding in every direction. Yep. Right, and then you can go and say padding is like one percent, three percent. There you go. What's wrong with that? Sounds good. But the problem with this is, let's see, padding. Josh, what is it again? It's clock clockwise, so it's top, top right, bottom right, left, bottom left, right. So top yep. is three percent, right zero, bottom three percent, and then left zero, 
there. So if you were, if you want to do that, then you don't need three zero three zero. You can just do three zero just to have the two of them. Oh the really? Top bottom, yep, top and bottom, left and right. Just like this. I don't see your screen. Oh, there. Okay, there you go. Um, so if you, yeah, what three, you three zero. Oh, I had, I had, I had the web. I had another page up over it. So, but yeah, three zero is going to be top bottom is three percent, and then right left is going to be zero. Nice. I like now that. Now you know. So height, just like that, and then that that can be for any component, right? So okay, let me steal this. So height eighty percent, padding three percent zero. Let me go do that. Hang in there, Joshua. Are you done? You got tired yet? Let's nope. See, height. So height 80%, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said padding would be 3% zero, right? Yep. Or was it or was it zero three percent? Nope. This is this is top and bottom is three percent zero uh, right and, and uh left is uh zero. Okay, let's do it. So what I'm going to do next is that I'm going to go into this uh, main layout and I'm going to copy this guy just to see it across the board. Kind of looking nice and pretty. Let's do that. So let's go back to this guy. Ooh, uh, so when you went bigger, um, where, where does your link go? Why why did they appear? See, so I think I think it's because your your padding um, is is shoving around. So inspect it. Right uh, there. The padding, Joshua. Yeah, that padding killed it because of the. Yeah, see, if there was no padding. So instead of percentage, this is where you want to put um, your uh, like a. A, a fixed value like a one em or a or a 10 pixels or 2.5 em that's why you advised or was it one em oh that's not gonna work either it's gonna hide it uh 0.5 em but then how do i know it's not gonna this kinda... is a, this is doing your top and bottom so really you just want to push it down too and stuff right so if we um this this is where the this is where it gets tricky and you have to do it, like the the container uh, div and stuff. So, um, I also want to align it in that direction. So I want to go here and say uh, justify content right right for this guy, and then there will be justify content left and all that. I think 0.5 em is not too bad. Or what do you think? I uh, just resize it and make sure that it's not and, uh, um, CSS math is, is I can I could never remember how it's gonna go work itself, but um, and, okay. If you zoom in and out, does it uh, does it uh, move it around? No, nope, nope, it's good. Looks good. Okay. Four point five AM. Okay, let's go back to this guy. So that would be my dear friend back here. See how I'm controlling all the CSS and C sharp? Like mm -hmm. I'm not touching. Right. What did you say? Padding to 1.5. 0.5. 0.5. Yeah. 0.5. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I also wanted to go and say justify content equal middle. Which means that this guy here, justify content would be left. And justify content for this guy would be right. And this is a uh, 0.5 EM. And the same thing goes for 0.5 EM on this side, right? So now let's try it. Let's see if that works. I think we might be uh, really close. What do you think? <laughs> what did I do? I probably forgot something, ain't I? Um, uh, let's see. Uh... <laughs> I know you can't see anything. So it just said header base. I think I think I kind of fat fingered something. Header base. Is it just telling me to recalculate? Is that what it is? Or or <laughs> compile or something? <laughs> this 
is hilarious. Oh yeah, that's all that it is. I think it just it, it's just barfed. It basically was like, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do with you. So okay, so this is right aligned. This is left aligned. And then there's this guy. Why is this guy weird like that? I I have yeah, I, I don't think there's something in Justify called middle. I think there is a center. Center. There you go. How about that? I'm good. Okay. So it looks like a pretty good component, Joshua. Well, I like the colors too. I, I think we should stick with right that color palette. <laughs> yeah, silly guy. I mean, the colors we're going to throw away, but uh, if we. So that means we get to have that full control, right? Because. But the, but the concern here now, Joshua, is that it doesn't scale. You know what I mean? Like, if you add a lot of components on the right side, right? Does it stretch? Does it push its way through, right? I think it would because when I took away, when I took away the about, this section disappeared. This whole section disappeared. Like, if I go up in here and say, take away that uh, element, delete this element. Oh, now it wouldn't. Now it's going to be there no, forever. You're going to, you'd, you'd want it to be min width to be 33% or whatever and stuff, right? So that you don't want to set it to a, to a fixed width and stuff. You want to say, you want to say the uh, max width, width, you mean? Well, uh, well, it depends on what you're, what you're, what you're looking for. I, I want it so to the, scale. Like, like if this right side decide to have a lot more, it should be pushing. Or should we let it push? Actually, I don't think we should. I think that's a bad practice. Because if yeah, you, if, you, if you provided something for the center, like a search bar, and then you had items on the on the right hand side, the um, w you know, it w if you if you let it push over, then your search bar would disappear and stuff. So, uh, I mean, it sounds like what you want to do is if you if you had a bunch of items and then you go to a mobile view, it would hide it underneath the hamburger menu and stuff. So if you had, um, if you could, if you uh, if you said that the items were going to be, uh, they took up a certain amount of space, um. You would just have to say that they um, they would collapse into a, a menu and stuff. But interesting. Is so, like, right? let's uh, yeah. So let so go to one of your example websites and then drag your window really small, and then you you should see the the header change. You should they should things should you should either get a simplified view, it hides underneath of a a menu, or it will just shift to a completely different different view at all altogether. And those well, are, those are the year. Well, well, hold, hold tight. Before anything and everything, I want to actually go and get rid of this guy completely, for, for the time being, until we kind of figure out. Like, I'm going to get rid of this guy completely for now, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go hot reload this guy because we don't, we don't need that guy yet, right? The first thing that pops here comes to mind is that uh, what's what's this extra space that's happening here? Let's see. What is this? You know what I mean? Like the Like in the top row, is there anything here that's making it kind of have this extra space? It could be a padding or something like that. Let's see what it is. There it is. Padding right. This is the PX4, right? And that PX4 is basically saying, I'm assuming the entire page is like six, Josh, or five. And if you do PX4, it will give it just four blocks of the page. Is that like some sort of a, let's see, what if well, I, I, I think PX4 would just say that it's, um, it's, uh, uh -huh. applying, um, six, um, uh, uh, pixels yeah. of padding on it and stuff, but. No, no, no. Oh, is that what it is? That's what it means? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think you're right. So uh, padding in the X direction is going to be five, uh, five uh, units. And I would imagine that would be five pixels. Six would stretch it all the way out. What if I put three? What if I took it out completely? Is there one? Yeah, you have one which basically stretches all the way from corner to corner. 
would that be the one that we want in there? But, but it's not equal. So the the only so um, if you look at your applied styles, um, so you put in one, but it, it, you'd have to have a corresponding style for that. So I don't know if they're using Bootstrap or it, it's using or Bootstrap. It's using Bootstrap, and I don't want magic, honestly. But I know there's a framework that's running that's doing things. Yeah, so if you if you clicked on computed, or if you just scroll down there and stuff, you saw it right there and stuff. Um, if you uh, see that PX one is yeah, going to be applied. Is. So that's like, and so you can see it in the utilities um, SAS file yeah. but it's yeah it's uh so point one or or one it says it's uh padding and it's a uh, it's point two five um so it's uh because of both sides it's it's fifty so it's it's weird I don't know it's um they're but using the, EM so yeah the one thing I want to try here Joshua just to test this is that what happens if I go here and say width 100 px okay i'm gonna increase this guy just to see see it's not it's not breaking through see what i'm trying to do like i want to oh, yeah, go yeah. here and see if this guy can break boundaries and it can't it Put can't it back pass. on that so you can see that what, what it is or more text inside that item so like oh more text just, oh gotcha yeah. gotcha i like that okay so let's do that. So let's go here and say, gobbly do, gobbly do, gobbly do. See, it, okay, it so dotted that, it. Yep. So it, it did ellipses. Yeah. So what's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> Should Okay, here's another proposal for you. Should we... Because you could probably have like a nice search bar. Should we make the right side and the left side about 30% and the middle side is 40%? Would that make more sense? Or or uh, should we allow them the, the user to pass in the what, what percentage that they want to put in? So, um, you, you know, the we're... I mean, so you're demonstrating two different things. So you're 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 demonstrating that the CSS can be done in C sharp. Um, so that that we're we're doing that. Uh, but then we're also talking about a templated header. Do we want to standardize the header to where all your anybody who uses this header is kind of locked into a certain spacing, or do we want to be uh, you know, with well, they can closed. modify it. They can oh, that, it, right? Yeah, it's open close button. So the default is we want it to be, uh, you know, the thirty three percent or or thirty forty whatever and stuff. Um, but then, do we have a mechanism for them to kind of supply their own um, sizing? I, I mean, or... Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna ship. Like, I'm not at the stage yet where I want to ship UI components. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm just showing people here's how I would approach this problem. Right. So if I go and say, here's here's what I'm thinking. Like metal, metal should be 40, right? And then right mm -hmm. side would be 30. And then left side would be 30 as well. Mm -hmm. I would go, and then if I go and kind of refresh this guy and then go find the page, it's not this page. I like this. Do you like this? Do mm -hmm. you like how this is? Okay. I thought you might find this a little entertaining. Um, I also forgot to call this center. There's no such thing as metal. So let me refresh this. Uh, by the way, hot reload is not going to help with sharp styles. And the reason for that is, is because it's C sharp. It doesn't really try to, it's not a quick UI thing that you're doing. So how about that? That looks a little neat, you know, not with the colors, of course. The colors is just to help people kind of see what's going on, mm -hmm. right? But now, here comes the interesting part, right? And this is the moment of truth, right? We want to go there and take away all these colors. Like the view that I want to present, right, Joshua, is to basically go and say, okay, this is back to normal, this is back to normal, and this is back to normal. And I'm going to pretend that these guys don't even exist, right? And what I want to do is that I want to put a little circle in here. For like a like a user view, mm -hmm. and I want to put a big, big ass title in here. Like I want to go and say, you know, <laughs> Tarafu Web or something like that, right? And then in the middle, I want to put like a search bar, right? So I'm gonna go here in the middle, in the middle in here, 
and I want to put a little search bar in here. Don't worry about like the styling of the little magnifier and all that. Don't worry about that part. You know, I'm just trying to go and say, hey guys, here's a simple thing that you can do right here, right now, designing this high level view, right? And, I, and while I'm at it, I want my background picture to be blue, right? Just like we did 50 other thousand things, Josh, <laughs> right? Does that look familiar? We, we never do yep. things in blue, do we? No, never. Hmm. Never, never. Can't think of a single thing that's ever been Nah, 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 no, sir. <laughs> okay, let's let's try it, right? So I'm gonna go here and say, um, Tarafu portal, right? And I'm gonna go into. Right, Joshua, I'm going to go into the, take away the colors. So the colors are out. So all of these colors are out, right? So this 30% green goes out and blue goes out. Okay, and now I want to go here. Let's start this. So if this is really true, and it, it is what it says it is, if I go here and put a header one, and say Tarafu web, right? And then here, I'm gonna go and say, here's an input, here's an input, and then, uh, I don't know, style, height. I don't know, what's a good height for this one? Like 100 px, look like that. And then maybe placeholder, search. Right. And then mm -hmm. in here, I need a circle. <laughs> I need a little uh, image of a circle. Let's say uh, image user. Yeah, something, something dumb. You know what I mean? Like something that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Uh, save image, copy image. I wish I could just copy images like a normal person. And let's see here. Images. Let me do this on the fly. So I'm going to close this. Images. And then can I just paste in here? Nope, it won't let me. So OK, fine. Uh, open folder expire. Now you can't see that. Uh, can you actually see the, the, the IDE? Nope. I can see the IDE, but not your uh, not your folders. You can see images, right? Oh, yeah. I can see in the folder images, yep, but that, not the whatever you're pasting into right now. Okay, sounds good. Okay, perfect. That, that's good. That's good news. So, okay, let's just call it profile.png. And then, and then, and then. So now we have that profile PNG. I can just go here and say image mm -hmm. source. Love the autocomplete images slash profile PNG. Right. And I want to make sure that this guy gets copied with the build. Copy always. Don't know why is it not by default that maybe they don't want to pull in binaries or God knows why, what the reason, Joshua, honestly. But, you know, okay, so let's rebuild this. What do you think? Those Fresh. are the gotchas about the Visual Studio that just, uh, they get you. <laughs> That's how they get you, right? Yeah. Okay, it's it's a complete disaster, right? <laughs> disaster. <laughs> it's a complete disaster, but we can fix it. So check this out. Look at this little oh. guy. Beautiful. I don't, I don't know. This is the. That's not too bad, right? But so, it is aligned in the in the in the center and stuff. What happened to the to our input? Why is it ridiculous? So, so instead of because I made it a, a hundred px, remember? Oh, okay, okay. Right. If I chill out and just leave it like this, it would have been fine. Yeah. Right. And also, this guy here is like what like. Should we have made it like uh, H3 or something? Are you just zoomed in or like uh, hit control zero? Is that, are you just zoomed? Oh, what's control zero? Control zero resets your uh, zoom. Ooh. There you go. That's that's a normal person. There you go. How about that? That's not too bad, is it? I mean, we they're they're segmented in their in their respective thirds, so uh, so it's a good good step. Well, let's say uh, well since well well here's here's something for you. I honestly 
Okay, a couple of things, right? Of course, you know me. I have to kind of have, I have to have opinions, Josh. It's a problem, right? So, so we we made this an H two, right? I want to be able to go and say, well, okay. Well, first of all, I don't like. I know I'm not being very coherent right now, but I know <laughs> I know that. Uh, the big box, right? We said one PX, right? Maybe we should make it PX2 because it's a little too close to the edge and I'm not super excited about that. Okay. So it's a little too close to the edge. It's not perfect. You know what I mean? How about now? Check this out. And then control zero. That's not too shabby, huh? Hmm. But then see, once you you go crazy, right? You know, a hundred percent is the rule. Four hundred percent is the rule, right? I mean, you're not like you're gonna have to kind of figure that part out. But this is not too bad. This actually well balanced out. Yeah, you have the you have the containers, um, you know, there, and then the the um, applying the um, ellipsis or whatnot is is the. I mean, you you were kind of touching on it earlier and stuff. Is what if you cram too many things in there, or what if you have? Um, but that gets into like uh, some fancier CSS that you have to have you know uh, that you have to calculate the the size, or you have to do uh, kind of a mobile like responsiveness and stuff. But the but the uh, gist of it of having the three different containers and then as a render fragment and then using the C sharp to do the CSS, uh, um, we have we have it. So looking pretty good. Does this text box look a little? Ah, uh, see, these guys are not centralized properly. Do you notice? Do you see it? Like well, you wouldn't see. Huh? Yeah, I think I think it's just an optical illusion from the. Um, your your text box should be taking up the the full width, isn't it? Um, let's let's throw another item at it. So notification icon. Well, just copy, well, you could do that, or you could copy and paste the profile picture twice. And yeah, but it's not gonna look pretty. Actually, fine. Yeah. Is that how you do it, Josh? Is that how you live your life? POC. You gotta POC the POC. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Here's a question. Um, uh, when you do agile, you have a planning meeting to do your to talk about your um, your your next sprint, right? Yeah. Should, should you have a pre-planning meeting or a planning meeting for your planning meeting? <laughs> you know what you and I just did. That's that's my planning. Yeah. Like literally, do you know this thing that you and I just did at the beginning? Like you, you and I sitting down here and saying, "Hey, this is what we're gonna build." That's the planning. We're done. Move on. <laughs> and then the boxes that you know I put together to kind of draw the roadmap. I guess I guess we did hit record so people could watch if they didn't if they didn't attend the meeting. So I did. I, it does... <laughs> you should also hit record. That's right. Like <laughs> you shouldn't like you shouldn't be obligated because. So this is extreme agile because you're because we're changing decisions literally every single second, right? As we go, you know what I mean. So, so, so this is what it looked like. But the, but here's the deal, though. The components that we will be passing here are going to be divs, right? Let's see what it looks like if we passed it divs. I don't. I think it. I think it'll be okay. Don't you think, Josh? Mm -hmm. I think I think it'll be okay. They because the container be... is still going to be um, so our container has the the property to see how wide it is and stuff. So our, the the thing that we pass into it. Um, Let's see. So here's a bunch. This is not too bad, Joshua. Right? This is this is pretty good stuff, right? Okay, D, and then refresh, and then let's go back into the fray. Ooh, that's not good. Let's rebuild this. Up. Yeah, it looked it, it it really looked bad. I'll show you. I think the diff thing broke it. I think.
Yeah, the diff thing is like, yeah, I'm out of here. Watch this. Boom. The div basically said, I don't have to play by your rules. Well, let's go back and look at the style. So the, what, where's the... Um, like in spec. The, yeah, no, well, that, that too. But the in, in your C-sharp, so the we have a div. Where did you set your, your uh, style for your, your image? Um, there's, no, there's no style for the image. Well, there's something said in the height, right? So before it was, um, oh, because the the div here isn't doesn't have a height set on it. Um, but shouldn't uh, it play by this guy's rule? Because this guy's flex, right? So it kind of snapped uh, out of it. Well, you go back to your um, so your selector. You could do um, uh, because right right now we have the the right div is be a hundred percent, and then the div is just not, so. If you go back into your web browser and you put a hundred percent height on the div, it, it it should behave right. It should. Let's see. I know you're tired. I'll let you go. Uh, hold tight. Let's see. Yeah, are you talking about the div that's for the image itself? Yep, yep. So that guy. So if you put a height on that to be one hundred percent, so then it will inherit one hundred percent of the of its parent, right? Is that not even close to being the right thing? No, well, it's not like so. That. I think this guy has to be flex as well. I think. Yeah. See. As soon as I made it flex, mm. but now it went in a completely like, okay, so, so why is that? Because flex doesn't care. Look at this crazy. Well, I think it's because the, um, oh, that's kind of cool. The, the yeah. that, uh, so this is flex, but then is your right side uh, div uh, flex. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So push it over and stuff. So, um, yeah, see, hey, there you go. So does that mean that every component have to play by this rule to fit in there? Uh, I mean, we you could probably get some fancy with uh, some some CSS selectors. Um, uh, do you have pseudo selectors in, in your sharp styles yet? You, you you can do anything. Like I can go and do a custom selector if I want to. Oh, can you? Yeah. Like, look, I can go here and say. Hey, I can make this, watch this. I went and added this new feature where I can go and say, hey, CSS class, right? But I can mm -hmm. just go and do whatever I want, selector in here, and it will enforce that. I can go here and say, hey, the selector is actually all. Like it doesn't have to abide, like this will translate into top row. Right, dot top row because I said CSS mm -hmm. class, right? But I can yeah. override that. I can make that anything I want. It's really cool, so right? then you could do uh, your CSS class. You could do, uh, you could specify that it's going to be uh, left side and then comma left side space div, and it will apply that to uh, all divs underneath that uh, that uh, left side. Oh well, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So let's go back here. Let's see if it works, right? Yeah. So for for left side. Yep. Right. Or let's be right side because you're that's the that's the one you were having right trouble side, with. Yeah, that's right. Yep. So right side would be selector. Right. So now and, you're gonna specify it. It would have normally been uh dot right side, right? Yeah. And then you want to do div. No, no. So now you had a comma. So now do uh, dot right side space div. So that, that that'll say anything that's uh, yep. any div that's underneath the right yep. side. Um, Let's do that. That means that it'll apply this rule. And what is that but rule that careful. we have on the right side? It's, be careful uh, it's, because that means that inside that right side, it's gonna flex right on the right, which exactly yep. <laughs> that's exactly what it did. Watch this. <laughs> So how many rights do you need right hand turns you need to make Watch. to make a left hand turn? Watch it did a right of the right. Where it's better. We're moving in the right direction. <laughs> what I what I would have done, just just so you know, I would have gone and said, Oh, actually, watch this. Well, we could just make it another rule, right? Exactly. Just, like you could just go yeah. like this. Why don't you just go and say watch this? I can go here and say 
uh, CSS class, right? And then the selector for this one, right, is that guy, mm -hmm. right? And then I can go here and say sharp style, right side divs. Yep. See? So now I can go and say in your, in the header, I can go and say, okay, for the right side divs, you're going to have them all display flex. Yep. Sharp style. And all of them will be display flex. How cool is this tool? Isn't that cool? I want to see how, like, probably not tonight, and stuff, but the, the how we apply tests to this and how we actually do the cascading part of it. Because oh, yeah. it, in the React world, we have merge styles where you can give it a whole bunch of things and it'll just like merge things together and stuff. Uh, this looks very similar to this, looks like the C sharp version of a merge style style set. Um, but it's, uh, I think this might be, this has a potential to be easier to understand. <laughs> It, it, if it so so I'm trying to to be honest with you I wasn't thinking about that but what I was thinking about is this is not working for me like when I was thinking about CSS I'd be like okay as a software engineer I mm -hmm. need to be able to test everything like when someone comes to me like someone left this comment on on my YouTube video he said oh usually people would just say it's CSS you can't test it that would mm -hmm. piss me off that would piss me off something awful Right, because I'd be like, what do you mean? It's just code. You know what I mean? So anyway, I want to go here and say padding. Well, left. I think one of the, the best thing that stands out to me about this is that the uh, the the ability to organize your CSS because like right now, like I've worked so with so many people, they're like they almost they'll they'll do all of the logic and they'll do all of the other things, but then the CSS they're just like they're, and they're like I don't know where it's at because it's it's always like hidden like somewhere. It's and, and mm -hmm. like or or it's pre-compile, you know, like that you have, mm -hmm. you have uh, SAS compilers for the, your, your CSS and stuff. This, the styles actually get to live with your component in the same language as your component. And it looks like you've already thought about the the having the selectors and stuff. So it's flexible enough to do the fancy things. Yeah. And because the blazer is going to give you those those generated um, uh, extra bits on your on your uh, selectors, that, that is taken care of for you. So it, it actually puts it in the right language, it with you know uh, living with your component and it has the flexibility to to uh, handle those scenarios. Um, so once you once I see the uh, the testing and the the cascading part of it, no more CSS. You just always, always all C sharp. Now, how do I write my C sharp to, to go in my React application? It, don't don't challenge me. Like I I would <laughs> I would literally like, dude. This is I think this is my thirteenth NuGet package. Don't challenge mm -hmm. me because I I would literally just go and say, okay, no more React, you know. And from so that, now on, that's the last linchpin. So you and I kind of solved that and stuff, but it was it was kind of you know, we're using that that interop. Um, and the interop works, but it's a little bit hacky and it's a little bit complicated to to explain to people and stuff with um. With the dynamic um, Blazor components that you can actually wrap a React or Angular component around the Blazor component and actually take a Blazor component into the those SPA frameworks, that's fantastic. With the with the dynamic uh, JS, where you can bring the uh, you can avoid the 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 JavaScript interop, you can bring some of your JavaScript um, calls into Bla in Blazor. That's awesome. You have now have like your your C sharp styles and whatnot. We know how to test our components, whatnot. The only thing I don't know how to do um, that. That would be able to say 100% of new apps just are our Blazor is we can have our Blazor components live in React, but what about our React components that like we just have that that, that component library we want to like we have this header, we, we have the search bar. That search bar I just don't want to rewrite. And I and I think Daniel Roth even highlighted and stuff. If you have a um, an element that you can make a, a web component, you can compile your your uh, your Blazor down to be a web component, and so you can just give it the, the attributes from go putting a Blazor app into uh, the JavaScript app. But if we went the opposite and said, I want the affluent UI search bar to be to live here, but then have all the back and back end parts of the Blazor com, uh, piece with mm -hmm. your, your, your sharp styles with your, with all of the rest of it, there'd be no reason to have anything. There'd be no reason to use TypeScript or JavaScript. You would just say we could, we could have the, the pick and choose the, the, um, the components of the, that are already written or we could write our own, but it could all start from C sharp, but. Right. Right. And I agree, Joshua. I think that's, I think there's a potential there, but, uh, 
I think this is pretty pretty sweet. This is exactly what I wanted you and I to play with today. So yeah, we can now. Huh? I was gonna say this. We're heading in the right direction. I like it. Do you like it? <laughs> okay. You know, hopefully we'll remember this, and hopefully we'll, with no interruptions. <laughs> and next time we will try to kind of bring this into to our ruffle, right? So this will be your dashboard. This will be your, you know, we'll create the left side menu, the right side, everything else. What do you think about that? Do you think that's a good deal? Sounds great. Anything else you want to? Close with Joshua before we wrap it up. It's almost at uh, two hours here. What happened yeah, to my no, hair? <laughs> yeah, I don't, well, and that's a lost cause. But um, uh, no, I, I think uh, every time we, we get together, um, it seems like you've got a new library. So uh, you know, maybe I uh, will uh, if we we'll see if you have a new library next time and stuff. But no, I always learn something, and we always have a different perspective. So I, I it's a uh, I always enjoy hanging out and, and learning something new. So, so just something for you before, you know, we check out, you know, I might be considering um, not writing a library, but starting with, you know how there's bootstrap, there is fabric, there is all these different frameworks, right? Mm -hmm. I want to start my own. I want to start my own kind of UI standard, right? And that UI standard will not necessarily, it's not more, it's not about the visuals, Joshua, but it's more about how UX is supposed to be. And here's a proposition. And then libraries could come out of that. You know how, like, let me give you an example. There is this theory called the tri nature of everything. We never talked about this ever, right? Like we never... And then on top of the tri nature of everything, I built the standard. And then on top of the standard, I went and built Git file. Right? So you have all these layers on top of each other. I think we can hit in the same direction, you know, when it comes to UI, because there will be a standard UI experience and all that. Anyway, I know it's late where you are. So I'm going to let you go and be healthy and safe and prosperous. Always my brother. You know what I mean? Take care. All right. Thank, Thank you me. everyone for watching. And as usual, you know, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, or compliments for Mr. Joshua here, you know, why did you put the headset behind your ear like that? Why? My, my ears get hot. <laughs> I have to swap them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in another video. Take care, Joshua. <laughs>